Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this one, I wanted to give you something different. I have shown you uh, many different ways to use both the portal and using CLI and parcel in many videos. And in this one, I'm going to show you the same thing to do a very common task, which is deploying Azure Virtual Machine, but now using the C Sharp code. Programmatically, how you can uh, deploy a simple Azure Virtual Machine. Okay, and this is part of AZ203. So if you are into programming or if you just want to kind of learn, if you have a Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, .NET Framework, how you want to use this, please pay attention. Okay, so if you look at the cloud deployment model, we have IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. And IaaS is the virtual machine that we are going to deploy. We'll have the biggest... Uh, control on the machine although we'll be responsible for updating the machine and uh, doing a, a lot more than if you're going to use the PaaS or the SaaS uh, so again uh, what we need to do provisioning the VM even if you do it from a portal okay you would be entering your name of the virtual machine the location where you want to deploy you got to decide the size, limits, and extensions. And within extensions, you can run custom scripts, deploy and manage various configurations, and then also collect diagnostics data. All right. So also, you can you need to think about the related resources when you deploy the virtual machine. What you need to do, typically, uh, if anytime you create a resource, they're created inside a resource group. So you would need a resource group or an existing resource group. You're going to choose a storage account or create a storage account, VNet and NIC. So all four resources needs to be created. And again, as I said, we have looked at these as your portal, parcel, and CLI many times before. So today we're going to look at how to deploy the virtual machine using the C Sharp. Again, the steps, create the resource group, create virtual network, network interface card, and VM. Now, what I wanted to do for this video, I just wanted to give you the code first and just show you what it happens before even I, I tell you how to configure your environment and develop the code yourself. Okay, so if you just look at this code, okay, I'm using the Visual Studio Code, the latest version right now, and I have a Omni Sharp extension installed, and I'll show you how to do that. So here are some using. Uh, statements over here so these are all the features that i'm using and really it's a simple very simple do, uh, do, c sharp application that i've developed uh, this is the name so namespace the class and public public void main okay then what i'm doing really here is your first thing you need to get your credentials and the credentials you get from a file which is called the azure path dot properties okay that's the convention so if you look at, I have a Azure Path convention here. I have already provided my subscription ID, my tenant ID. I have registered one tenant within the Active Directory. I have created a, a secret for this particular client. And then uh, these are default. These are management URI, base URI, auth URL, and uh, uh, graph URL. You will, you will have to do this. So really, you for your own work those are gonna be different these will still remain the same okay so once you have that what you are doing over here you are getting the credentials you are loading this file okay SDK context Azure credential factory and then you're loading all of that inside the credentials and then you're authenticating to the Azure using this particular command azure.configure with log level and you're providing the basic log level then you authenticate then credential you are providing this credential that you got in the in the previous command and then with default subscription so once this is done you really want to create a simple virtual machine so let's uh, uh, make some i have already tested out so i'm just going to change this resource group i'm going to call the resource group 2 z204 resource group 2 uh, I'm going to call the virtual machine name uh, WinVM because this is going to be a virtual machine. Uh, I'm going to change the region to East US. Okay, this is where we're going to deploy our virtual machine. 
a vnet name and everything i'm going to keep the same it's 204 vnet and i'm using a vnet address 10.10.0016 subnet name az204 subnet subnet address is a uh, cid addressing i'm taking a slice of 251 address addresses nickname admin user is student admin password is the most secret password that we use typically for most of the labs now i have some console statements here so for us you are going to create the group and and take a look how similar those comments are here azure.resource group.define you're providing the group name that is come coming from over here okay with region location is coming from here we have defined and then dot create that's all next thing once you have the resource group you're going to create the virtual network again azure azure is the is the variable where we have stored all the authentication information right so you are doing you are calling it say this time azure networks dot define and then with region again you are providing the location just like the previous uh, previous command that we ran then with existing resource group name with uh, address space with subnet and you are providing all of that that you have already defined over here next it's time to create the network interface nic again the command is very simple you provide what you want to create where you want to create and then at the end you say create and once you all of that is done you are ready to create the virtual machine so you run this command okay so to run a dotnet application you just do dot net and then run and that's pretty much it and if you click on it you should see the console right line that I have uh, uh, it says something something weird happened so we gotta test it out just a second so it's saying one and three is a problem so here is my problem so here I have given a wrong uh, uh, for comments I'm using a wrong symbol so let's redo this again one more time hopefully i am not gonna see the problem i have another problem on line 32 region does not contain a definition for east us okay so i have to fix the region so give me one second let me fix that one as well all i have really done is just make the east us e i have capitalized and us have capitalized and i'm just gonna try if this works usually when i'm writing uh, uh, commands from the CLI or parcel, this capitalization doesn't ma really matter. So I'm gonna try it again and see if this time it's still containing, uh, giving us problem for the East US. Okay, so this time it still said this uh, region does not contain a definition for the East US. So let me see how to fix that one. Give me one more second, please. All right, I really like debugging stuff and share with you how I debug. So this time I'm trying out uh, instead of East US, I'm trying out US East. So let's see what happens. All right, let's hit up to dot run dot net dot run. And hope we don't see. Ah, looks like we have solved the problem. So for whatever weird reason, well, this is the convention that uh, you are gonna gonna have to use the US East instead of East US when you are using the region dot. Uh, way to define your region okay so really what happened it is time to create the resource group uh, create the virtual network so everything is going happening right now so let's go quickly to our azure where is my azure there is my azure let's go to resource group and i said i have uh, tasted this resource group so if i refresh there should be another resource group just like that like that showed up inside here i have deployment going on so i got the need got the virtual network the wind vm deployment is in progress eating the virtual machine so look at that my goodness so our storage account is also there if i click on the virtual machine let me see the status of it uh, it says it's creating look at that isn't it magic so we have something a little tiny little program over here and we just clicked a button we just said dotnet run and it just created all of this stuff for us can you imagine that we have created our nick our resource group our storage account our virtual network our subnet everything is done ip address space is defined and it's it's deploying something right now as we speak okay so now it's done 
creating first formation so it, uh, it, it, it you know I got the command from back so if I come back over here and refresh my page I uh, it says it's running all right so it's a success so what I'll do in the first thing so what I have I'll give you maybe I'll put it in even github but uh, but I'll, I want you to learn how I did that okay so I'm I'll go back to the very beginning. Let me see if there's anything else that I need to talk about in this code. The code looks pretty simple. So, first thing that you need to do, you need to install the Visual Studio code. And I hope that I don't have to teach you that. So, all you need to do, go uh, and then search for Visual Studio code download and you will get the download click on the downloads you will get the visual studio setup just go through the setup of whatever machine you're using today I'm using the windows so I downloaded the windows and just went through the uh, process once you have that you open up the visual studio code you need one extension okay and it's called the uh, omni sharp and you just click on this button okay or you can also do Control shift X and once you click on this tiny little button here and then search omni s h a r p omni sharp if you just search for this this is the only thing that will show up and it says c sharp for visual studio code you click on copy and and then you will have the install button since i have already installed it says uninstall so you will have to install that one okay once you have installed this all you need to do you come back Okay, you will probably be in this area. You open up your Visual Studio code, uh, come to your terminal, and what I would like you to do, create a new folder. So let's do this. Let's do CD, go back, uh, folder down. Let's see if it gives me my command from back. Okay, so MKDIR uh, as your VM deploy. Okay, that's the folder I'm going to create. Okay, you can create anything you like. Then I want to CD to Azure VM deploy. So now I'm, I'm inside this machine, inside this uh, uh, inside this folder. So next thing I'm I'm gonna do. Okay, so here's a, a little cheat sheet that I prepared. Get the Visual Studio Code, OmniShop extension. Uh, this thing I'm gonna do in a little bit. Create new directory I have already done. So to set up your application, just like the .NET application, you would run .NET new console. So I'm going to run this .NET new console and it should set up my uh, console for me. It said restore succeeded everything. I got my command line back. So I should have all the files that I need to uh, get started with my .NET application. Uh, next, you would also need to run this .NET add package Microsoft.Azure management fluent. So just copy this one and run this command over here within this directory. And uh, you, it will go through it and it will take just a little bit. If you're doing the first time, it may take a little long. Uh, so this one, I have it now uh, in my path. So it's, it says everything is successful. Uh, next, we need to create that azure.properties. Okay, so you, you copy that one or from here, okay, you say new file and then you say save as and you want to go to the other folder that i created so where is the other folder azure vm deploy right here i'm gonna i'm gonna call it azure auth properties you can actually name it something else if you like but that's the convention i'm gonna use it and i'm gonna say save so now i have a blank file and if you look at something else i'll show you over here so there, this is another link I'll give you here. Microsoft got a deploy an Azure virtual machine using C Sharp and Resource Manager template, where they are using the Visual Studio. And I'm not using Visual Studio; I'm using Visual Studio Code. Uh, but still, some section is still valid, okay? And this is the section. So this is the portion where uh, the Azure dot properties. These are the things that we need. So copy that one and put it over here. So what you need, you need the subscription of your own subscription. You need your key, you need your tenant ID, and again, these are you don't have to worry about. So the first thing that you need to do now, let's uh, clean up some of this stuff that I have. I don't need. Okay, so now the first thing I need you to do is go to your uh, subscription. 
okay the first thing go to the one of the value subscription get the subscription id let's just start there okay, copy this one come back over here remove this with the proper subscription id that you have next is we're gonna we're gonna add one application so next you need to go to the azure ad okay once you're in the azure ad you need to create an app registration so that you can use the application that you are developing i've already created this i want to create another one so let's click on new and say vm deploy something like that you can use whatever you like i want to choose account in this organizational directory only and i'm gonna say register okay so once i click click on the register what it's gonna give me it's gonna give me the uh, application or the client id uh, tenant id an object id so the client id i'm gonna copy next and here is the client i'm gonna put the client id okay and the tenant id was uh, just below directory this is really directory tenant id so you copy that one you provide your uh, the tenant id and now you need authentication key okay, to, to create an authentication key so still in this new app that you registered you just come back over here click on the certificates and secrets and we want to create a client secret so just create and just call a secret whatever you like uh, i'm just going to give you expires in one year and then add and this is my secret i'm just going to copy this one okay and once i have copied that one i'm going to put it here uh, in this key i'm going to provide that one okay now you, there are many ways to manage the key since this is just a lab i'm just going to put the key uh, the secret in this file uh, uh, but in other ways you can also handle this one okay so you got your key your subscription id client you have registered you got the key you got the tenant id so your authentication properties are now set so the next thing you need to do you need to create a new file okay again i'm going to save as uh, i'm going to call it uh, program.cs just maintaining uh, our convention okay so that's my program.cs file and what i'll do i'll just going to copy the whole thing from here and put it in the new program.cs file okay and we'll go over this one one more time so again what you're really doing here you are defining your using statements and here is your namespace uh, starting deployment of new virtual machine okay then again you're getting the credential this time we're gonna get the credential up for the new application that I developed uh, that I just created. Oh, the other thing that I missed is this application that you have registered that needs to have some permission. So go to your subscription again. Okay, just search for your subscription, get your subscription, and on go to your IAM tab and add a role. And I'm just going to give this guy a contributor role and search for this particular application that you have uh, registered and just select that one and then save so now the application has sufficient permission to work on this particular subscription okay so now come back over here again so az resource group say call it maybe three win vm everything i'm going to keep the same uh, what else you can change over here instead of 2012 gp1 you can change to like 2016 or something like that but for this one, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to save this one. So now it's time to just simply run our .NET, .NET run. Okay, .NET run. Okay, and I'm just going to run the program. If you hit, if you see any error, like uh, you run out of quota, sometimes it happens when I'm deploying too many machines and I sometimes run out of a VM quota but this time it looks like it didn't happen so I'm just deploying this machine just fine so what I expect to see okay so I expect to see there should be an, another resource group resource group 3 should be created so let's just go over here go to our home go back to the resource group and uh, I have group 1 that I tested you have not seen that group 2 we have looked at in the beginning 
if I refresh this, I should have a group 3 and there we go. If you click on this one, uh, looks like I have nothing created inside this group. Uh, it said it is time to create, so there should be some stuff showing up. So let's refresh this one and look at the things are showing up just fine. And inside this resource group, here is my win VM that's getting deployed from our uh, C sharp code. Click on, click on this one. It still says it's it's getting created. It's a creating state. And as soon as the creation is done, it will give you tell you, yeah, buddy, everything is ready for you. So let's give it one more second or a couple more seconds. And once the lab is once this is deployed, this is done. So if I come back over here, again if I refresh this, this is running. So this is how easy it is to 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 use and start using your, your sharp, your programming skill to interact with Azure. Okay, hope this video is useful because it take it took me a lot of time just to get to this phase because a lot of people they will have videos they will tell you maybe the code sometimes they will talk about the Azure uh, the properties file but the steps no one really gave properly so again the steps we have done we installed the Visual Studio we got the Omni Sharp extension we registered an application and then give the application contributor role to the subscription uh, we also uh, created the client secret uh, then within our environment we created a new directory we ran the command dotnet new console to create the console application we ran this dotnet add package microsoft azure management fluent and then we created the azure.properties file we provided all the properties subscription client key and tenant and then we created the program file we provide the using statements and then credentials and then we got the credentials from the from the file i have to update this code just a little and once we have that we created the azure uh, connection the connection and then it was very very easy for us so let me just get all of it i'm also going to get this uh, in my my video and if possible i'll put it in my github account as well so you can also get the code from there sometimes the YouTube uh, videos they'll have uh, 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 some some trouble with uh, early braces and stuff like that so I'll just say program.cs okay so that's all hopefully you have everything to get started with shishab application we'll continue this course or this type of videos where I'll introduce more features where you can programmatically deploy multiple different resources within Azure if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, uh, please share, uh, subscribe and leave your valuable comments so that I can make better videos for you. If you're studying for the exam, uh, good luck. Have a great day.